and welcome to my channel. My name is Katie and if you're a photographer like me, you know how important it is to have a nice, consistent, aesthetically pleasing feed on social media, but especially Instagram. But visually planning your Instagram feed or grid isn't just for photographers. You could be an influencer, a blogger, or just want a really aesthetically pleasing feed on Instagram. I want to show you how I went from this kind of grid when I first started in photography, not when I first started on Instagram because that was high school Katie and, well, we don't speak of her, how I went from this not as consistent look or feel to my grid now, and it's not perfect, uh, it's definitely not perfect yet, but it's definitely more consistent and we're getting to a place that I really, really like. The first tip that I'm going to give is take consistent looking photos. And I know that can be easier said than done and I'll explain what I mean by that. So you need to take photos that have a consistent look and feel. If you kind of have a more minimalistic vibe about you, it might look kind of off having a really busy photo with a ton of extra stuff in it. And what do I mean by a busy photo? To me, in my mind, a busy photo is something with not a lot of negative space. There's a lot going on in this photo, whether that be color-wise, subject-wise, you know, it, it just depends. But to me, if it doesn't have a lot of negative space around it, it's a very busy photo. But another example is if you have kind of a light and airy feel, you don't want to put a really dark image in the middle of your Instagram feed. So if you have a more light and airy feel on your feed, that means the pictures you take need to reflect that. Maybe you're not taking pictures in front of like very dark, dense tree line or very dark tree trunks or a dark building. You want your background of your image to also match the vibe you're going for. So if it's light and airy, then you want your backgrounds to look light and airy. So looking for diffused light and not very dark contrasting backgrounds and that's going to contribute to your overall feed and the consistent look that you have. So if you're a photographer like I am, I'm a wedding photographer or I primarily shoot weddings. So when I'm taking pictures, let's bride and groom portraits after the ceremony, I want to make sure the backgrounds wherever we are is going to look like my style and then that's going to in turn fit into my feed because everything should be a similar style. I hope that makes sense, but I know like lighting and location are really important aspects of photography. And if you want to have a more consistent vibe about you, then you're going to want to nail down pretty consistent lighting and backdrops. You just want your photos to look cohesive. And if your photos look cohesive, no matter how you edit and arrange them on your feed, they are all going to fit together. So after you've taken your photos, you're going to want to edit them with a similar process or use the same filter. Having a similar or consistent editing style is key to having a consistent feed. If you usually edit your photos kind of bright and airy and then some of them you like really, really dark and maybe moody, it's going to look a little off on your feed and you're not going to have that nice, cohesive, consistent feel. That being said, you can edit your photos however the heck you want. And at the end of the day, photography is art. And so I wouldn't want to say don't edit it the way that you want to edit it for the sake of the feed. Obviously edit your photos however you like, but it's just things to think about. And if you want a consistent feed, you're going to want them to all look cohesive on your grid. So again, for me, I'm in wedding photography. I also want all my pictures to look consistent because I want people to know what their photos will look like. So how I edit, that's where I showcase it. I don't want to confuse people. So if you, I don't want to confuse potential clients. I don't want to confuse couples that I edit very, very bright or light and airy. And then I edit kind of dark and then I edit true to color. Like if I'm all over the place, people are not going to know 
how I edit, so then they're not going to know how their photos are going to turn out. So for me, having a consistent editing style is important just for the kind of photography industry that I'm in, and especially for the feed. So I wanted to throw that in, that you can edit your photos however you want, but there are just some things to think about, and if you want a consistent feed, you're probably going to want to edit the similar or the same way. So how I edit my photos, I use the KJ preset process, and it's a very... I wouldn't say simple, but it's a step-by-step -step process of adding different edits to your photos. I did a whole video review of it that I'll make sure to link down below, but it has a learning curve, I will say, but there are other Lightroom presets that you can use. I will put a big disclaimer that not every, like, I, I don't think there's any really one-click wonders in Lightroom. I, I always always add additional tweaks to my photos. I've never applied a preset and went, oh, that's perfect, gonna walk away immediately, nothing to do here, like I've never done that. And I also wanna mention that you don't have to necessarily use Lightroom to edit your photos, but I do think that there is a free version of Lightroom for your phone, so maybe that's what you would wanna do. I personally love Lightroom, I don't like any other editing app or software, Lightroom is my bread and butter, I love it. But if you don't have Lightroom and you just use filters, that's fine. Just make sure that it's the same filter each time or the filters have the same kind of aesthetic and they fit together really, really well whenever you're editing your photos. The third tip I will say is don't put photos together that are too busy. So this tip is obviously going to depend on the kind of vibe you want on your feed. If you are more minimalistic, then yes, you really don't want busy photos, but sometimes people like more busy photos and if it works for your feed, then totally fine. But for me, I like to have a, a rule of thumb where I do not put portraits over top portraits, if that makes sense. Because I'm looking, my vibe, my feed, my aesthetic is more like classic and vibrant and bright. And again, I've said this so many times, I am a wedding photographer. So I want to give off that classic kind of vibe. So I do not want to put a portrait of a bride and groom and have that in the feed be above another portrait of a bride and groom. To me, it just looks a bit too busy. And there are exceptions that I put on this rule that I've made up for myself. If there's enough negative space in between the portraits, I will post it. Or if I just really like the photo, I'll post it. I try not to put too many rules on my phone. So instead of putting like portrait, 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 I will supplement that. So I'll put a ring shot, maybe flower shot, or the west, west, the dress details and the venue details and other things like that kind of in between all of them. And it really breaks up the feed and makes it look very classy. So I, for if you're an influencer, for example, maybe you post a selfie and then something with like your coffee mug or a detail shot of your outfit or your nails or something like that kind of in between all the pictures of like selfies or just pictures of you just to give it a little something extra and it's not just portrait 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 again this is all subjective this is just my opinion I think it really helps it not look so busy if that's what you're going for on your feed and for me it helps maintain that consistent look and feel. And the fourth and final tip that I'm going to give is use something like Planoly. I don't know, hold on, let me look at what I actually use. So you can use something like In Preview, which is what I have on my phone, but I've also used Planoly. Um, I like both of them. And you can use those kinds of tools to really map out your grid. And I think I'm gonna insert like me going through my grid and really my thought process behind it. But I think it's really great to visually see your feed because if you're really just posting, you can't see it until after it's already posted, you know? So if you have 
something like Planoly, you can just photo dump in there and then rearrange them as you see necessary. Same with in preview. In preview to me is like a little bit more finicky, but it's what I have on my phone, so we're already there. I already use it, it's fine. And you can visually see how your feed is going to look. So maybe you loved a picture you took and you wanna post it tomorrow, but maybe you should wait a day or two and post a different photo before then because then your feed will look a bit more cohesive and not so busy. So it really helps me see what I'm doing, honestly, it helps me see what I'm doing when it comes to my feed and I'm a visual person so maybe I'm like, oh, I want to post this ring shot, but maybe a shot of the bouquet is better there and it looks a bit more cohesive and it just works better there. I don't know how to explain it other than you just like see and it works better there. <laughs> That's not the kind of advice you want to hear. But using something like that is really, really helpful for me. I highly recommend. This video is not sponsored, clearly. I have no affiliation with them. I just truly like them. And so I think they are amazing if you're trying to get a consistent look and feel. Photo dump in there, rearrange them around, and make sure your feed, you like you get to see your feed before you post it and make sure it has the kind of look and feel you're going for. So now I'm going to go through on my phone and kind of show you how I think of my feed. And I hope this helps you. Okay, so I'm going to start my screen recording. So I'm coming in to in preview, which I mentioned is what I use. So I'm, I'll scroll down. This is, should be what my feed looks like currently. Um, so you can start seeing what I was talking about where it's not portrait over top portrait. I think down here I did with uh, my our 4th of July picture and then that wedding picture. I don't know if you Maybe I'll like circle it in the video. So I did that there. But again, I try not to put too many rules on myself. It was 4th of July. It, I thought it was a cute picture. So I wanted to post it of me and my husband. So I did. Um, scrolling back up, this is what my feed looks like now. And I'm going to show you everything above that is all planned out. So Clearly, I'm taking photos of weddings pretty consistently, so I have a lot of content to work with. But I will say this bouquet in the, like, not bottom right corner, but kind of that bouquet, I actually took at my house. And the same with this ring shot. That's my and Jesse's wedding rings um, using that bouquet. So I've mentioned before, like, how to build your portfolio when you don't have any experience. This is what I'm talking about. It adds something to the feed. I got to practice like different and cool things. And I mean, I didn't, I wasn't on a time crunch, I'll tell you that. But you can see that adding these detail shots throughout the feed give it a more consistent feel. So I was really debating, and I'll show you. I was really debating putting this photo over here and this photo here because I need to blog that wedding. But to me, it just looks a little bit off. And I don't know if I can explain why, but it just does. So I am I think this look and this vibe is so much better. And you can see that it's not just ring shots and invitation suites. I do have two kind of close to each other there, but it's flower shots. It's detail shots of the bouquet and boutonniere. It's um, detail shots of the bridesmaids, bouquets all put together. And um, it's also like, hold on, let me scroll down a little bit. For this photo, it is, a close up of you know the back of his head and her hands and it just all looks a bit more minimalistic do you see all of the like negative space i'm gonna try and like i don't know put all of this in the video like you see all the negative space over the portraits like it's never like this one is probably the closest one where it doesn't have as much negative light 
negative white, negative space. Um, but you can tell I have, I try to not do too close up of some things. I like a lot of negative space in my images, especially this one ring shot. Uh, I just love it. It looks so minimalistic. I don't know. I just like it. So I always have like a minimalist mindset when I'm going into my feed, but yeah, so that's kind of how I think of it. And so coming up here, I needed to vlog that, like I said, but I really like it here. And I don't, as my feed stands today, I've only gotten up to this invitation suite. So I'm going to post one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more photos until I get to that blog post, just because in my opinion, it looks best with the feed. And so that's what I mean. Like sometimes you want to post it because, oh, I need to blog it or I just really like this photo, I'm going to post it, but you kind of have to take a step back and think about how it's going to affect your overall feed and overall vibe with exceptions here and there. So I'm planning on, we're going to take another family photo because we do have this little nugget, a new little puppy. So we need to take an updated family photo. So we are going to do that, but, and I'll fit it in the feed. But no matter what I want to do, so if I want to post this, I probably wouldn't maybe post another one of those or something like flower details, ring shots are like my fave, or a cake, maybe the venue details, something else over there. I'm not sure what I would do over there, actually. Maybe that, that looks actually pretty cool with the bouquet down like that. So maybe I add that to the feed. Again, still maintaining that consistent look and feel. And I like to plan it out in advance. And then I kind of add in other engagement sessions, other bridal portraits, other weddings, other photos that I like to take as I go. So I hope this was helpful. My thought behind, you know, my feed. And I hope that this made sense. I feel like I've been rambling honestly. Are there any other things that I missed in this video? Please make sure to leave those in the comments down below. If there are some other helpful tips and tricks that you use to get a consistent feed, please share them with all of us. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. Bye!